Here comes Harris on the corner blitz. They'll swing it out wide. Akem wrapped up and dropped. Tanner Palmborg. I was blitzing off the edge, you know, disguising it, and I get off clean. He pump faked a little bit, and I hopped a little bit, and then uh, right when I went to plant, it was just non-contact. My knee just buckled, and I knew right away that something uh, was wrong. Tanner Palmborg being attended to, you could see right away that something went. I got to the medical table, and they started doing the tests and everything. They told me, you know, it was probably a torn ACL. But, you know, once you get back in the locker room, and I was just in there by myself, it kind of more hit me just the feeling of helplessness and that I probably, that there was a good chance I wouldn't be able to play football again. I talked to Coach Schmidt, uh, Coach Schwager about my role in the team still being a leader and still being a big part of the team. So that's kind of more what I shifted my focus towards, just being able to help out the guys. And before Sac State, Dr. Mann came out to me and like I was already doing rehab stuff and I was moving pretty good. And he said that there are a certain, there's a certain amount of small cases where you can play on a torn ACL. Not that it's recommended, but that it's possible if your knee's stable that you should be able to run and everything again. So you know, I still had to get a lot of stuff sorted out with talking to some surgeons and talking to compliance and everything, but that's where it kind of set in. You know, we found out the torn ACL and then like a week later, I'm, I'm hearing rumors he's doing practice. And I'm just like, what? I'm like, I had to Google fastest like ACL recovery and it was like, six months, eight months. I'm like, he practiced in a week. And then he went on game day and played, so I was just amazed. This is a strong, different kid, it's mindset. <laughs> People have like gone up to me and have been like surprised that I'm playing and stuff like that, but honestly, it doesn't really hurt at all, so I don't really have a reason not to play. The biggest thing is just wearing the brace. Honestly, like, I feel fine out there. I think it's more of a mental thing than anything, just being able to go back out there and run and plan and not have to be worried about it, but I'm fully confident in my knee and think I should be good. I think it shows the team a lot about, you know, mentally, some mental toughness, some desire to get back out on the field and to, you know, really do what you can to help the football team. And that leadership goes a long way on the team. He's a real tough guy and seeing him push through some stuff makes my injuries or anyone else's injuries or nicks and bruises nothing because that's that's unbelievable that he's even out there. It's late in the season, everybody's kind of banged up, but if he can make it through with that, you know, you just gotta think, if I can make it through with anything if he can make it through with that. Takes some real courage and we're real proud of him, how he's battled back here and faced a lot of adversity, but we're pleased to have him back and his role should increase as we move forward. A lot of things come into perspective when you have an injury like that. You know, I was already moving on thinking like, man, like, I don't know what I'm gonna do now without football, like, you know, it's gonna, I knew I was going to come to an end sooner than later, just being a senior and everything, but, you know, that's not the way I want to go out. It's just great to be back out with the team, you know, being able to inspire the boys and be able to go and make this late season push again. Welcome to the Alara Center in Grand Forks, North Dakota for a critical late season FCS matchup. It's a top 25 showdown between the number four Weber State Wildcats and the number 22 North Dakota Fighting Hawks. We knew this was going to be a tough contest with the number four ranked team coming into Grand Forks and they were as good as advertised. We knew they were a good team and we knew that we had to go out there and perform, but we, I think we were confident in our uh, preparations throughout the week and we thought that we'd be able to go in there and battle with them. Constantine taking a deep shot, looking for Denby in stride. Daryl Denby will go the distance. Evan Holm takes this kickoff at the one. Got some space on the right side. Evan Holm still on his feet and there he goes. Evan Holm in the clear. How about that response for the Fighting Hawks? Touchdown, UND! We knew we just needed a big play. Kostic uh, kind of emphasized that, hey, we need to go get something done, and it was just a lot of good blocking, and there's a big space for me to run. And You know, you see the one guy making the play, but in reality, you had 11 guys that are, are doing their job, and when everybody does their job, that's when you have the best chance to be able to you know, create a big play, and that was a big play that we needed at that point in time. You know, we were tied up and had the ball at about midfield, and then uh, they made the interception, and we were really hoping to stop them at that point. Coach Schweiger and all the other coaches preach, um, you know, if the game's not going to go perfectly, there's going to be bad plays, and, you know, it's it's how we answer, and the plays after that determine um, our team and how, how good we can be. Third and six with 18 seconds left. Ketteringham with time. Going for Wanzik in the end zone. What a catch! Noah Wanzik, touchdown, UND! It was a double move, kind of a post corner, then kind of just a race towards the, uh, the back pylon, and Nate threw a good ball. And honestly, I didn't think I was going to get to it, but, you know, laid out and 
Um, turned out pretty good. We go and score in 40 seconds to pull within one. You know, now we knew, hey, it's 21-20, our ball to start the second half. Field position and time of possession were huge in this game, and we didn't win those battles. And for especially the way we play and the style we play, we knew that was going to be big going into the game. But I really give our guys credit. You know, we just battled and battled, kept hanging in there, and then made another big special teams play to give us a shot at the end. This one from 46. Snap's good, spot is good, it's blocked! North Dakota blocks it! They pick it up, they fumble it, they still get it, it's Donnell Rogers! He's going down the left sideline! Donnell Rogers, can he make it? Yes, sir! I was on the right side, they snapped it, I dropped off, and then Dion blocked it, and then the ball went off to the left, and Jackson tried to scoop it, and then he fell on it, I saw him look at me as he was falling, and I was like, is he going to toss it to me? And then he did, and I was like, oh. I just had to take it and go. You know, Dion was very close to the kick before. He was within an eyelash, and he was kind of telling him, if you sell out, we got a shot. And he left his feet, and it was one of the more headier plays, I think, by Jackson Turner to be able to flip that ball back. That was a very, you know, maybe not so noticed play, but that's something you wish you could take credit for as a coach. But he just did a tremendous job of, you know, flipping that thing back and then Donnell used his running back skills to get it over with. A hard fought game ends up going the way of the road team. Weber State 35, North Dakota 30 in a tremendously entertaining ball game from start to finish. You know, we had to rely on our pass game to get some plays and we made some of those, but you know, overall we were just not consistent enough throughout the whole game. I mean, they're a top five team, and to hang with them like that, right down to the wire is, you know, it's got to give you a little bit of confidence. Uh, it was frustrating, um, but it was also good for us, especially looking back now that we've watched the film, kind of analyzed what we've done. There's a lot that we can learn from, and we can be a lot better. So I think it's good, although I mean, it's not the outcome we wanted. It's, it's really good for the future. Come on now. Let's go. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Day by day is definitely important. It's um, just focus on the things ahead of us, the next meeting, the next practice, uh, and to really work on your craft. We really believe everything's out in front of us, and it starts one day at a time preparing for Idaho to go on the road. This is a team that has not lost in their building yet this year, and we've got to prepare well. This is going to be another challenge for us going on the road to earn a positive result. Let's go, guys. Got to do a great job here. Let's go. Realistically, you know, we got to win no other options. You know, it really is do or die, so we just got to come every week, be fully ready, and make sure that we can't let any slip-ups happen. Now, everything's in front of us, guys. Can't be more serious about that. Everything is in front of us, and it's got to be in your heart that we want to do something special. All right? It's got to be in your heart. That's what separates teams this time of year from the rest. <laughs>